everybody. Josh, the RV nerd of Vicious RV here with your monthly ish industry update. Although you may want to call me Tony the Pony because uh, a couple times through this video, you're going to hear my voice become a little hoarse. Anyway, um, we are going to be looking at uh, kind of what's going on in the industry today, as we tend to do in these updates, as well as look at uh, current rates of shipments, the general what's deemed as sort of health of the industry, as well as take a look at some factors that may uh, affect your travel and or purchase decisions through the season, uh, such as fuel prices, interest rates. We're going to be talking about that a little bit. What you can do to kind of uh, put a little bit of control in your favor as well, and a bunch of other things, including some tips of the hat even to some other RV dealerships and groups out there because I respect people doing good things regardless of what name is on the front of their business. Um, as always, I'll chapter mark the video so you can bounce around to what's most interesting to you and I spend too much time talking and setting these up, so let's just get going. But I do want to take a quick second to mention um, something I don't normally do. Normally, anytime I have anything topical that's not just an RV tour, I tend to save that up and blast that out here in my industry updates. But I had three things that I, I don't want to slip through the cracks necessarily. The first of which is a correction off my previous month's industry update. I had a video come out on that. I also had a video come out uh, specifically regarding the current state of RV service and how basically it's broken and what we're trying to do to help fix that, at least on uh, our end, as much as we can affect it and uh, a full big special feature that I spent weeks putting together on um, the uh, RV Frameflex conversation that's happening out there right now. So if those are topics that are interesting to you, uh, it's not that I'm just conveniently skipping past them, it's that I've already covered them pretty in depth and I've got full video links down there in the description that you can check out if you're curious about those things. In the meantime, let's get going. So kicking us off here, taking a look at the new RV market and, and kind of the health factors that I sort of monitor a little bit and one of those main ones is the you know the the flow of newly built RVs into the marketplace wholesale RV shipments so shipments from a manufacturer to an RV dealer um, if you look at uh, the, the most recent stats compared to the previous year 2023 overall shipments are up 11.1 percent and now I think for the third month in a row shipments are up versus the previous year now that's an easy thing to say, and I always try to be fair. One of the things that you need to remember is there were like three months last year, around this time of year, the manufacturers flat out did not build RVs. Many manufacturers took one, two, or up to three months off of RV production. So um, it's easy to say that, yeah, we're up this year because manufacturers are actually still building things. Although I would say it at a, a pretty modest production rate, but they are an active production, which is better than no production. Um, if you look, the uh, biggest chunk of this is actually in the towable RV market. I believe uh, over 26% uh, increase in towable shipments. And I think that that's really kind of a, uh, a reflection of the fact that um, there, there's been a push toward a little bit more of a price sensitive uh, trailer segment out there and that's where a lot of people have gravitated to because if trailers are up over 26 percent but the overall number of shipments is up only a little over 11 percent that means something had to give and that would be the motorized market the motorized market this year is not seeing the flow of uh, builds and shipments that it had seen previously so <clears throat> again that kind of supports the idea that while folks are totally willing to get out there and buy an RV and go camping, the focus of the marketplace has really shifted toward a higher level of price sensitivity than we had seen in years past. And you're seeing that reflected in the products that RV makers uh, are building and the products that RV dealers tend to be stocking right now. And just a real quick look at, uh, by, for comparison, uh, kind of the state of the Canadian RV market. Now keep in mind, as a US-based dealer with a US-based dealership group, I don't have a great source of access to a lot of Canadian stats. So these are a little bit dated. They kind of go, uh, it's sort of like a look of one year to the next. But if you look overall, it looks really rough. It looks like the number of shipments going into Canada like less than half of what it was the year before. But again, I don't have awesome insights into things like that. Uh, Canadian viewers, Canadian dealers, I would welcome you to kind of chime in on the comments section here. Let me kind of know what you're seeing up in your neck of the woods uh, in terms of marketplace trends, what sorts of products are uh, a little more popular than others, just for the fact that I'm curious more than anything. 
<laughs> and you can't tell because I don't have hair, but the wind is whipping past me right now. I'm hoping it's not eating up the microphone. But shifting over from the new to the used RV market, taking a look there, um, for six months in a row now, we've seen the average value of wholesale used RVs coming across things like auction blocks, like black book values basically, uh, continue to drop. Although I've noticed less severely, if you look at the, uh, the, the trend on the chart there, it maybe it's early it maybe looks like it's tapering off and one of the things that also makes me kind of think that is just 15 years of experience in my experience um used rv values tend to kind of follow the sunshine and with the weather warming up in a lot of places like the fact that today i'm walking around frankly almost warm in a vest like this um <clears throat> it gets people uh that gets their clock ticking and if we continue to have uh, a, a, a warmer spring, I think more and more people are going to get out early. I think more and more campgrounds in the more seasonal states like Michigan, the Midwest, where I'm from, uh, are probably going to look at opening early because why not get some dollars rolling in, you know? Uh, I expect when that happens, uh, the available pool of used RV inventory, which is okay right now, it's not super strong, but it's okay, is going to probably get dinged real quick um, <clears throat> and that'll go away. now. This is a bit of a good news, bad news situation. As used RV values on average drop, that also means trade-in values drop. Because in a sense, you're selling a dealer your used RV in the same way that they're selling you a potential used RV. Um, as uh, existing dealership inventories get depleted, that may be uh, incentivizing, or that may incentivize the dealership to be able to allow a little bit more on your trade-in. Now, this is all hypothetical, and it has about three layers of if and then and but and but wait. Uh, but the fact is, we uh, may be coming into a part of the season here where if you've had a trade-in that you really want to get rid of, but you just haven't been happy with dealer values over the fall and the winter season, check back again come springtime and or summertime. And, you know, if uh, a bunch of used RVs are suddenly no longer available, you're going to find a dealer suddenly going, hey, we're willing to go a little bit deeper with you to get that sucker on hand because right now we're sucking ga uh, eggs on inventory. Sucking gas, sucking eggs, sucking fumes. I'm an idiot. But also a quick mention of the used uh, motorized RV market. It is so weird. Used motorized values constantly seem to bounce up, down, up, down every other month. But if you notice the, like if you if you zoom out a little bit, like it'd be easier for me to sit here and say, oh, motorhome values are up. Yeah, kind of recently, but overall not really, no. And I don't think that they're heading that way. But whether it is new or used motorized, I do think that the uh, they're, they're kind of hitting a bit of a normalization bottom out phase uh, before they maybe creep up a little bit come springtime, and chances are likely again fall come winter because used values again, they do tend to follow the seasonal sunshine nature of things. So who is buying all these RVs? Uh, that's a question that I get sometimes. Uh, whether it's flat out in the comment section, I'll see it on social media. People ask questions like, hey, you know, I, I hear all this stuff that's, that's so rough. Who is buying this stuff? Well, um, RV Trader recently did a survey, and they are a huge, uh, man, they're a big entity that has a lot of data available and a lot of users from which they can pull a lot of information. And um, they found out that 60% uh, of people currently out there kind of looking actively shopping, they're doing so under the um, estimation that uh, the economy will get better or at least stay stable and they're okay with that. So it gives them at least enough confidence to look into an RV purchase. Now what's really interesting, uh, obviously that leaves 40% of people, not a small number who thinks the economy is not going to get better or stay the same. But here's what's really weird. All the, the, a huge percentage of, e, uh, of both sets, of, of all the people polled said, regardless, whether the economy gets better, stays the same, or doesn't, doesn't really affect our uh, thought process when it comes to shopping for an RV. 50% um, of the people polled, regardless of how they felt about economic factors, said they plan to have something in their possession by spring or summertime. And 74% of people polled said that they would actually move their purchasing thought process and schedule up if interest rates had improved a little bit. So. It's really interesting. You hear a lot about all these factors out there and it makes sense that they would affect someone's RV buying decision, 
but it's interesting that it really largely doesn't seem to be. Certainly there's some folks who are like, nope, given what I'm seeing, I'm not gonna do it. Totally get it, I respect that. But a lot of folks, it's almost being called what's called the Goldilocks customer, where regardless of what indications are out there, they're gonna buy what they wanna buy when they wanna buy it. But another one of those factors, kind of like interest rates, are fuel prices. Now keep in mind when I make these videos, because it takes a while to put them together, I have to record a bunch of this stuff a little bit ahead of time. So uh, as of February 27th is where this data is coming from, average gallon uh, of unleaded fuel across the nation was 327 per gallon. And obviously when you take a look at the, uh, the map here, some areas are more and some areas are certainly less and the map tends to seem to follow those trends pretty consistently. Um, the uh, interesting thing here is just before I recorded this, fuel saw a 10 to 12 uh, cent per gallon kind of hike around uh, Valentine's Day, and it seems to have leveled off since then. Now, just like we already talked about, you know, used RV values, it's been my experience that fuel costs tend to follow the sunshine summer season. So I wouldn't be surprised if cost per gallon continued to rise um, uh, coming in you know, to the spring and summer season, especially if we continue to see more sunshine earlier this year. You know, the groundhog didn't see a shadow as, as I recall, is that correct? I don't think, I don't think Phil saw his shadow anyway. Um, another thing I thought was interesting is taking a look at the 10 most expensive states to get fuel in our nation. Um, I don't think any of those names are really going to surprise anyone, especially a place like Hawaii. Um, you know, it's not exactly easy to get fuel out there as compared to uh, someplace a little bit more domestic. But, um, you know, I live in Michigan, which tends to be pretty much in the middle of the curve. And uh, I, I know that a bunch of our stores are further out west and folks out there commonly report much higher cost per gallon type stuff. And um, it's tricky because, you know, I only get so many years with my kids. So part of me wants to say, well, you know what? So what a fuel costs, what it costs. I'm gonna go out there and make memories. I can make more money later. But at the same time, I look at it and I go, yeah, but money you know i i get that maybe we do something a little bit closer to home and i'm always curious to know what you folks think like how how would fuel costs maybe factor into your potential traveling and or rving plans this year i know i've asked that before but i always find it very interesting i also stumbled into something that's still a little bit localized like specifically to the state of wisconsin but i think it's inevitable that we're going to start seeing and hearing more about this and i'll do my best to share any of it with you that i can uh, the state of Wisconsin state legislature has a, uh, approved a bill that would effectively, um, it, like, um, RV industry specific, essentially like franchising laws. And the goal here is to, um, to improve or maybe enforce uh, different kind of levels of interaction and or support specifically between like dealerships and manufacturers for the benefit of assisting customers when it comes to things like pre-delivery inspections, um, uh, warranty processes, some of those things that really scare people. Like remember when I talked earlier, I talked about the state of RV service is generally broken. This is another extension of that exact same conversation. It's definitely a thing out there that is really starting to get some notice. And, and I'm thankful for that. Truly, I am. Um, I wasn't able to get really specific details, and this bill's currently, as far as I know, uh, being sent to the governor of Wisconsin to be, uh, you know, signed and approved. But it's very interesting to think that we're uh, beginning to see more and more potential legislature, um, uh, you know, laws regulating the RV industry versus the industry being a self-regulated entity. There's a, a, a lot of folks out there who say the RV industry is non-regulated. It's a self-regulated industry, and I get that that sounds like I'm splitting hairs. It's not the same thing, certainly, um, but it definitely also very much feels and sounds like a conflict of interest. Again, totally get it. I'm trying to be fair. I respect that. Uh, I, I don't know the status of this bill. I've heard some similar things kind of happening around California in terms of how warranty processes may or may not be handled. Um, I, I think that we're kind of early on the cusp of this, but I don't think we're done seeing this. So if you hear about anything in any state, um, tip me off to it, send me a link or something on any of my social channels, something I can uh, sink my teeth into and start looking at. I'm happy to try to peel through it and maybe throw it into one of these updates in the future. And recently here, uh, a story kind of came out where Forest River was um, closing and consolidating one or two of their uh, production facilities. Um, now, one of the, the things people ask, like Forest River does a lot of this where they'll have two brands that are essentially identical or are near identical 
um, and they have two names. Well, part of the reason they do that is if they need to scale up or down production, they can still keep those offerings available without giving an entire brand an ax, which is very, you know, it, it's hard for dealers to be able to uh, react to that. And it puts a lot of scare in a customer's eyes. Even though you typically still have, uh, you know, support and warranty and services available, it feels like it went away if you see the brand name go away. I get it. Um, I did some digging into this, trying to figure out what's going on and what the future of it is and what they're doing here is they're actually making some room for something I'm I'm, I'm really hopeful takes off and, and makes a big difference. Uh, time will certainly tell, but they're basically going to be uh, ramping down production in a couple of facilities to about early April. And at that point, they're going to go through, uh, and the plan is to refit these things as customer service uh, parts experience fulfillment centers. And I'm really, really interested to see where that goes because Forest River is a big entity and this is a potentially huge undertaking for them and it's all still very uh, very early in the process and special shout out to uh, Mr. Doug and his big team down there that invited me down to kind of get some early insights into this. Um, they're, they're really open to a lot of ideas right now trying to figure out what people are looking for, want, need, etc. So don't be surprised. Uh, it's possible if you're a member of Frog Forest River Owners Group that they may try to they may, they're talking about what if we create like, um, you know, a, uh, an owner's council, you know, where comprised of actual RV owners who say, sure, you're doing these things, but here's what we really need or something like that. I'm going to be very excited to see where this goes. And I hope more and more manufacturers continue to recognize the importance of and invest in that after the sale customer experience. So hopefully this is a sign of good things to come, but it's, it's gonna take some months. It's not like next month, it's gonna be up and running. It's gonna take a while. But more directly uh, related to potentially purchasing an RV, what are we looking at for interest rates this year? They've been holding steady for quite a while. And even though a lot of um, uh, inflation related factors are beginning to cool off, it really sounds like uh, you know Fed policymakers uh, and rate set type people are, are really gonna try to, to keep things pretty steady where they're at right now. Looking into that a little bit, what I basically found is their goal was to avoid uh, the uh, um, you know inflation head fake is what they're kind of calling it. Where there's there is a history out there where um, you know inflation factors cool, so uh, policymakers drop rates a little bit, and then inflation starts to reaccelerate, and then they have to almost overcorrect the interest rates, which just puts a lot of people into a little bit of a bind. So they're they're currently saying that they're basically going to hold things pat for a while. There's a lot of suspicion that later this year interest rates may drop, but I, I, I'm not an economist. Don't don't take any sort of like major financial advice from some balding idiot like me. That's just what I'm kind of seeing through the various interwebs that are readily available to anybody. Um, but in the meantime, what if you're like, yeah, but I'd, I'd really like an RV, but interest rates kind of spook me. What can I do? Well, this is situational. I'm not saying this is what everyone should do. I'm saying it's something that some people feel. If you absolutely don't want to play the waiting game, you don't want to see where interest rates are going to go, you want to go camping right now, knowing that potentially rates may drop after you finance this thing. Um, some lenders will allow you to refinance if the rates drop, uh, sometimes at effectively no closing cost. It just depends. Some lenders don't. It really depends on who you're working with there. Another thing that I've heard some people say is they're really hunting hard discounts right now. Uh, they're finding where there's you know various manufacturer incentive, uh, incentives incentives through show season, and some of those are out there. Um, I've, I've been kind of hitting the show circuit myself with our team here uh, during the, uh, the first couple months of the year, and there have been certain situations which I've seen manufacturers offer thousands off units purchased at the event um, while the event is going on, then when that rep hops on the plane Sunday and leaves, those uh, opportunities are gone. But uh, what it allows someone to do is potentially save a chunk of money off the front end. And um, first of all, that helps keep your payments down. Secondly, if you, uh, the way some people are looking at this is they say, well, interest rates, that's variable money. And I, as an owner, can control this by potentially paying early and ahead. So I'm gonna just make up a number. If you can afford 300 a month, and your payment comes up to 248, some folks will continue to hit that 300 a month to help blow that out of the water and reduce their total interest generated over time. Without question, a higher interest rate will always generate more interest dollars per month. Um, are you willing to wait or not? Again, that's kind of the question. Whereas um, the 
actual total out the door after tax, title, license, parts, and everything, that's hard money that you're on the hook for no matter what. So some folks have been really hunting those show season opportunities to get the hard money cost down and then controlling their variable money by paying early ahead on their payments, which most lenders have no early ahead uh, penalties in the RV industry, at least nothing too severe. I, I think one of the worst I've ever seen was like a $200 processing fee if you pay it off within like two years or something. If you compare that to an amortization schedule, that is a huge savings. But I'm not saying you should ignore interest rates and go out there and buy anything. I'm just trying to give information. What if you don't want to wait? That's a thing you could consider. I'm not saying that's going to work for everybody. And is there hope for RV service, really? You know, I already mentioned how uh, I, I flat said the general state of things is pretty broken out there. We're trying to come up with our own program just to help expedite things uh, within the current limitations of the system best we can. Uh, we're seeing where various manufacturers are, be, are, are investing more and more in their side of things. Like I mentioned how Forest River's really focusing on a bigger effort toward the uh, you know total customer experience recently here. But I, I spotted something interesting down in uh, Indiana. There was a school that has begun offering um, like early, like level one RV uh, tech training courses through like RVTI. And I think that's very, very interesting that uh, young people are potentially seeing uh, or, or, or at least having the opportunity to explore being an RV tech as a potential job or career, um, you know, at a younger and younger age with more education, more certification, frankly, than a lot of people currently doing RV tech work out there uh, actually have. Now it's been really small, really limited, but I think that's very interesting. Actually, right here locally, uh, we have this thing called the Branch County Career Center, and it, it's in a sense, it's like a you know an early access trade school where kids in high school can go get some very specific job training to come out of high school and actually be educated to know how to get into a potential career field. So um, it's the first time I've ever seen RV repair be considered among options like that. But the fact is, for uh, right now in the foreseeable future, there is plenty of work out there uh, available. And I think we need more hands doing it I think this is kind of a pretty cool, pretty interesting thing. And we are mired in all kinds of negative information out there. So when I see something positive, I do try to share that as well, because my goal is to always be as fair as possible. Um, so recently here, uh, Jayco and Lipper partnered up, uh, did an event down in Florida where basically they, they packaged up, uh, they, they made thousands of these little uh, basically care packages uh, that include things like uh, clothes, school supplies, personal hygiene products for local boys and girls clubs, uh, for um, you know children who may not necessarily always have easy access to those things, and any sort of giving back to communities, especially as it relates to kids, is something that I really like to see and appreciate. And um, if you uh, if you've ever wondered if I'm being fair or not, I have two tips of the caps to two other RV dealers and or groups out here, just because I saw some work that they were doing and I have a big respect for it. And again, I just want to acknowledge uh, uh, that kind of good activity. Um, Giant Recreation World in Florida recently helped lead a fundraiser that uh, gathered over forty six thousand dollars to the uh, National Veterans Homeless Support um, Organization which I, I think you can probably associate very quickly with what they do based on their name. I think that's absolutely awesome. Tip of the cap to you folks down there. That's some good work. Um, also, <laughs> this might raise some eyebrows, but tip of the cap to General RV. They, uh, they do a lot of charitable work. Um, and, uh, you know, it'd be real easy as another RV dealer to overlook that and not talk about it. But the fact is, over this past year in 2023, they donated over $100,000 to multiple different organizations, including like healthcare services, food banks, and a bunch of other things. Again, just respect. Tip of the cap to that group down there for, uh, you know, giving back in that way. So, again, if that's not being fair, I don't know it is. And that's always my goal. And on that note, um, again, uh, this might have run a little bit less long and wordy than normal. I am actually trying to pick up my pace on these things a little bit. But remember, I actually also almost have like three companion pieces to go along with this month's industry update relating to, again, uh, what we're doing with RV service called Bish Fix. 
Um, the uh, a couple corrections that I had off last month's update, I definitely encourage you to check those out to make sure you're always getting the best information, um, as well as uh, a uh, a big like 42 minute deep dive into the discussion uh, of what's happening with RV frame flex out there right now. If you're not familiar with those, if you haven't seen them, I would definitely encourage you to jump down the video description and click over onto those links to check out those things right there. And again, in the meantime, if you have something to share, um, I've asked for a lot of your feedback here. If there's another topic you want me to dive into, some kind of room you've heard about you want me to try to put into one of these updates leave me some notes let me know and if nothing else if you appreciate how we continue to, to take the time out uh, from just trying to help you buy the next RV to help you learn about what's going on uh, just in the business in general hit that like button on the video leave me notes says thanks nerd something like that make sure it's a big old hard erd in the nerd and um, we will uh, we'll catch you next time as long as you want to keep listening to me talk I'll keep doing it unlike my wife um, she's contractually obligated to listen to me talk, I think, until one of us dies. <laughs> Pretty sure that's actually how that works. Anyway, thanks again for tuning in. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and best wishes from Bishes, everyone.